Recent conspiracy claims that the US is behind a plot to start a new civil war in Iran in order to eventually destroy the current Islamic regime from power. Without arguing in whether this conspiracy is true or not, we want to look into how a civil war like this would look. But let's start with looking into Iran's history a little bit. So, the name Iran was established officially around 1935. Before the establishment of the name Iran, the area was known as Persia. The first antique scription of the Persians is from an Assyrian founding around 844 BC. This scription mentioned the Persians living alongside another people known as the Medes, which according to many experts is the former people that would later become the Kurds. Both of these people were in the beginning conquered by the Assyrian ruler Sargon around 719 BC. This Assyrian ruler is according to many the same cruel ruler that is from the story of Hawa and the beginning of Noros. If you want to know more about that we have an own video about Noros. Link is available in the description. Within time the Median Empire, the Kurds, came out of the Assyrian rule supported by the Persians. However, after years of ruling in the Median Empire, the treatment of other non-Median people such as the Persians became more and more oppressive. This eventually led to the state that the Persians, with the man named Cyrus in the front, led a revolution against the Medians. Cyrus didn't have a lot of men at his disposal in the beginning, but this was about to change, mostly since he gathered people from other oppressed parts and promised them full equality treatment as the Persians. This was a promise that he would keep eventually. And on top of this, he also worth forgiving towards the Median soldiers that he defeated when he eventually would conquer the Median Empire. The next move for the newly formed Persia was to conquer the West. Croesus was ruling the kingdom of Lydia. Croesus was very rich, and as we know, rich people always want to be richer. So both Croesus and Cyrus wanted to conquer each other. Croesus wanted to be sure that he would be able to conquer Persia since his kingdom was much smaller than Persia. According to what we know from history, he therefore contacted an oracle who said that if Croesus attacked Persia, he would win. Croesus eventually attacked Persia, but lost and Cyrus would soon enough conquer whole Anatolia. In the following years, Persia also conquered Babylonia and Cyrus also freed some captured Jews here and helped them build up a previously risen temple. Until now, the conquered places and people were treated fairly and Cyrus hold up to his promises. Persia had now evolved into an empire. Until the death of Cyrus, the Persian Empire kept on expanding in the east, reaching over 3000 miles from one edge to another. After Cyrus, his son Cambyses conquered Egypt. However, Cambyses wasn't as fair as his father. He was the exactly opposite, and this didn't make the Egyptian thrilled. It all ended up with Cambyses being assassinated and replaced by Darius I. Darius' first mission was to push back the first revolts that came during the assassination of Cambyses. He succeeded with this and restored order in Persia. He also introduced a new system of bureaucracy where he, Darius, was the ruler of the whole empire but local power was delegated to local rulers in different former empires such as the Medians, the Babylonians, the Greeks and the Egypts. Totally there was 50 provinces within Persia that was ruled by 50 different local kings who was ordered by the main king Darius himself. Around 498 BC a Greek tribe revolted against Persia, mostly since they weren't happy to be ruled under the king which Persia chose for them. Within time, Athens got involved, and for example this is portrayed in the movie 300. 
However, have in mind that the western side of the story often chooses to portray Persia as an oppressing evil power, which really wasn't the case. On the contrary, Persia has been one of few successful examples of working multi-ethnic societies. Just by calling the empire Persia should bring up dissatisfaction, since there were a lot of other minorities living within the empire. Persia had a rich cultural and religious heritage related to its religion of state, Zoroastrianism. This religion is a complex monotheistic one that talks about duality between good and evil, and it is said that it played a big role in the development of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It is one of the oldest religions, and also among the Kurdish and the Persian people, their first religion before the conversion of Islam. Throughout the years, the Persian Empire stood as a large superpower. However, Alexander the Great invaded the empire and his move was just in the right time, when the empire stood in a weak spot of power struggles. The empire's defense collapsed and Persia was gone for over 200 years. In the coming years, the area was invaded and conquered by everything from Parthians to the Roman Empire. Around the year 220 AD, the Sasanian Empire was formed and the ruler Ardashir went back to Persian culture from the previous influenced Greek culture that had been there for like 200 years. Zoroastrianism went back to become the official state religion. During the rise of the Sasanian Empire, the Roman Empire was in their weaker days, which opened up for the Sasanians to grow easier. The new ruling system introduced the Shah system, which would last all the way to modern years. The ruler of the Sasanian Empire, Khosrow I and Khosrow II, launched a large war against the Byzantine Empire in the West. This resulted in that the Sasanian Empire expanded but eventually they gave back as they were pushed back by the Islamic armies who expanded north. Islam became the official religion in the area and became part of the Islamic Caliphate and the Persian language was forbidden for over 200 years until the Mongolians invaded from the east. In the 16th century, the former Safavids tried to reclaim power but were pushed back by the Ottomans and when the British invaders came, the Persian managed to hold their independence while Great Britain invaded India, Pakistan and Iraq. In 1979, the Islamic Revolution came to Iran and a theocratic Shia Islamic State was formed. This new state has a conflict with both Saudi Arabia, the Sunni superpower, Israel and the US. So let's look at today's map over Iran. Iran's population are mostly Persian about 60% of them. Now, a majority of these has come to realize that the Islamic revolution and the Islamic government wasn't what they thought it would be. When the Islamic revolution occurred during the late 1970s, it succeeded because it had the support from the people. But during the years, it has evolved into something that it didn't stand out to be in the beginning. So a majority of the 16% Persians stands against the current power in Iran. This is also seen in the latest year where demonstrations and attempts to revolt has occurred in many cities of Iran. Now as we explained before, the Persian Empire, even though it tolerated different cultures and ethnicities with respect, tolerance and equality, they now live under a government that doesn't do the very same thing. The Baluch in the southeast Iran is living in what is known to be the poorest part of Iran. The region of Baluchistan is underdeveloped, desolate and poor and from these attributes only dissatisfaction and reason to act would grow. The Baluch is also Sunni Muslims and has during the years faced persecutions from the Shia dominated power. Now the Baluch of Iran are about 2 million people and would without doubt be able to make a difference in an Iranian civil war. The question is what the result would be. They follow a strict sect of Islam and meanwhile the regime they are fighting also are very strict. We don't know what could come out of the Baluch in the state as rebels. Would it be like the rebels in Syria or would it be more moderate rebels? 
Let's move on to the western part of the country and start with the Kurds. They make up to about 10 million in Iran, which is a huge number. The Kurds of Iran are lurs in the southern part of Rosh Halat, which are Shia, and the Sunni Kurds in northern part of Rosh Halat. But there is also a smaller part of Kurds in northeastern Iran, which during the years faced forced mass deportation in attempts to silence the Kurdish uprising. The Kurds in Iran has a special relationship with Persians. As mentioned before, they have been companions in a long time during ancient years. However, it is during the recent nationalistic stages of history that Kurds have faced heavy persecution from Iran, all from the Shah to the Ayatollah, who in Kurdish eyes have made a name of executing Kurds day after day. Today the Kurds in Rosh Halat are already fighting against Iran, and if a concrete war would break out, there is no doubt that foreign countries such as Israel and USA would send support to Kurdish groups fighting the regime. Among these groups we have the PJAK, which was formed 2004 as a sister group of the PKK. Now the PKK in Bakur are fighting Turkey and they have started several sister groups in the neighboring countries, among these also YPG fighting the Islamic State in Syria. The PJAK has since 2004 fought a war against Iran to gain political and human rights and eventually autonomy within Iran. We also have the Democratic Party of Iranian Kurdistan which was founded by Qazi Mohammed in 1945. They are also in a war against Iran and only a few days ago heavy clashes occurred between them killing at least 12 soldiers from the Revolutionary Guard and injuring 8 others. We already have a documentary about Qazi Muhammad and the rise of the KDPY, so don't miss that out, all the links are in the description below. Now the PDKY is supported by the Bashuri Kurds and the Peshmerga, most because one of Qazi Muhammad's companions were Mustafa Barzani, which is the father of Masur Barzani which recently hold an election in Bashuri Kurdistan. We could therefore expect support from the Peshmerga if a war would break out. We also could expect support from the YPG and the PKK towards the PJAK, and in best scenario, PJAK and KDPY would cooperate and not fall into some kind of power struggling Kurdish civil war, such as the civil war in the 19th between Jalal Talabani and Masul Barzani in Iraqi Kurdistan. Now we have two more important parts of the war that we haven't concluded. The first is the Arabs of Iran. They live mostly along the southern parts of Iran. Now these Arabs are divided. Most of them are Shia. Perhaps they would support the Islamic State of Iran. And this is where Iraq comes in. Iraq has a dominant Shia population. And during the civil war in Iraq, the PMU was heavily supported by Iran since they both are Shia. We've seen that loyalty towards Iran among Iraqi PMU and the current Iraqi government ruled by Shia is huge. There is no doubt that Iraq would play part in defending the current government of Iran, either officially or unofficially. And most probably also Hezbollah would have a part in this. Among the other parts of Iranian Arabs, which are Sunni, we would most probably see support from Saudi Arabia, who would do everything to fight against their main enemy, Iran. Saudi Arabia would most probably send economic and military support to the minority Sunni Arabs in Iran to wage war against the Shia groups and the government itself. And since the Sunnis of Iran is a minority in this war, this could also lead to a new wave of jihadist fighting Mujahideen from every part of the Sunni world. We've seen this in Afghanistan during the 1980s and also recent years in Syria and Iraq. Perhaps if Islamic terrorist groups such as the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda would take their chance to gain influence in the war. Now for the last side of the conflict we have the Aziris in the north. They make up to 18 million of Iran and is without doubt a very big key part of the conflict. The Aziris has wished for independence for a very long time. For example, during the Qazi Muhammad struggle, the Aziris also revolted from Iran. 
They gained independence under the protection of foreign countries but were eventually destroyed by Iran. If a war would break out, the Azeris would most likely try to form a power to gain at least autonomy, if not total independence, and Azerbaijan, the neighboring country, would have a key part in supporting this. But let's not forget that Iran is very powerful and the rebel groups that would be formed would have a very hard time fighting. But Iran is also a country with few western allies, they would instead have to count with the support from countries like Iraq, Turkey, Russia and Syria. The question is however, who will be there when the time's there? What do you think? Is the Iran civil war coming? Leave a comment and support this channel by liking and subscribing to it.